everybody. Here I am, Anita Finley. We're doing our Zoomer Times uh, TV show, and I have someone very special. Usually people are over the age of sometimes 40, 50, but I've got one of those kids, probably a grandchild, one of your lovely grandchildren, but he's very talented. And it's very exciting what we're going to talk about. His name's Lance Oppenheim. Good morning, Lance. Good morning. Thank you for, for having me. <laughs> it's great. And of course, you are the director of something very, very special. And for those people who've heard about the villages, um, I think that you, I'm going to let you kind of just talk a lot about this and talk about the movie that you've made. Why don't you, I guess, just tell everybody about, you know, about it a little bit, and then I'm going to get into why you did it. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds great. I am... Um, I directed a film called Some Kind of Heaven, and the film's a documentary which explores life inside uh, a retirement community that some of you may know called The Villages, which is, uh, if, if you don't know it, it's this like massive, self-contained, almost like a utopian society. It looks something kind of uh, not so dissimilar from The Truman Show, or the world of The Truman Show. Um, it's the largest retirement community in America, perhaps even the world. 120,000 people live there, larger than the size of Manhattan. Um, and the film looks at, a, you know, uh, kind of the dreams and desires and the obstacles of a few people who live there who kind of are having a tough time fitting into the, the kind of the fin more fantastical offerings that the, the community uh, that the community exists around all the organized activities, the sports, the this, the that, the folks that are in this film, um, you know, are, are I would say are, are, aren't fully representative of, of everyone who lives there, but they are certainly illustrating uh, kind of a deeper uh, side to what, to all the fun and games that exist there. So Lance, uh, I guess one of my questions as a young person, what brought this interest to you? Do you have grandparents or are you around older people? Well, I mean, to be completely honest, I, I grew up, I feel like I, I grew up in South Florida. I grew up like, you know, around hundreds of retirement communities. I, I'm very close with my grandparents. Um, but I wouldn't say that that was sort of the chief motivation of, of making the film. I, I, I've, I've made a handful of short films before making this feature length film that kind of explore um, folks who choose to live uh, you know, kind of uproot themselves from their from their average everyday lives and to, to be kind of cocooning, to cocoon themselves instead of a fantasy. So I, I followed around a guy who was, uh, I guess, a retiree. He, he was living exclusively on a, on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship for 20 years. Um, and I felt wait, like- Wait, wait, wait. What did you say? He was living on a cruise ship? Yeah, he was living, you know, as a passenger on a cruise ship for 20 years. So <laughs> I, I kind of had this interest already of, of, of how, you know, how do folks- um, this isn't quite the end of life, but it's, you know, it's, it's the final, uh, I, I, my grandpa would always say he was sort of in the winter of his life. And this was sort of the last time where he still had all of his, like, you know, he, he still could do things, but, you know, stuff was starting to slow down and friends were starting to pass away and that kind of mm -hmm. thing. So I was interested, you know, how, how do, um, you know, how do retirees, especially in Florida, opt to spend the, you know, that final or the final few chapters um, and I had heard of the villages growing up. I had really only heard of it from the, uh, th there was a lot of kind of rumors that were spreading around the place. There was this urban legend that they had a very high rate of STDs, which I later found out was not true. Um, but that wasn't what motivated me. What motivated me was the very fact that there were hundreds of thousands of people that were moving from across, you know, moving from the Midwest, moving from, you know, areas that weren't Florida to live inside of a place that kind of reminded them of their youth. And to me, there was something so cinematic in that. And I, I um, you know, to my surprise, when I got there, it almost seemed like age really wasn't, uh, you know, age really wasn't a factor there. I, I, I think most people probably thought of me as their grandchild or something, but I think for the most part, I, you know, I was the age that a lot of folks there were attempting to sort of live in or get, get wow. back to because everyone's trying to kind of go back to college who lives there. So um, there was a so lot Lance, of- how, Lance, how long did you spend there? I spent uh, off and on about three years uh, kind of going back and forth. I was in college when I start, first started making the film. This is my thesis in college actually. And then, uh, and then I kind of continued. So I just kept going back and kept going back. I'd go and edit a little bit and then keep going back to film more. Um, yeah. 
That's really interesting. Wow. Well, you really are dedicated and, and it shows, but I'll just tell you when I was getting my master's degree in gerontology, uh, Century Village was the big thing here. And I know you've heard of that. And it was one of my, it was a term paper I had to do. And people couldn't understand why people would want to segregate themselves with all the same people. And I said, okay, I'm going to find out. And when I got finished, I also felt that they wanted to be around people their own age. And so what you did though, is this is a very different class of people. And they're just like we're featuring on the cover of our magazine, Boomer Times, the cheerleaders. <laughs> Were you ever a cheerleader in school? I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it's, and it's, and it is honestly, there is something truly amazing about it where it's like, and, and that was, you know, the design of the film is not to, is not intended to, to like bash or judge or, or, or be cruel or anything like that. I, I honestly, I think there's a lot of good that a community like the villages can do in the sense that it really, uh, it really provides a, a whole different outlook on what aging can look like. You know, it's, it's, I do think a lot of people there have a, um, who find their footing in a lot of those activities. I think it's, it's, it's a great thing for them. And as you were saying, as I'm sure as a gerontologist, like one thing that I was really interested in, there was a study that I'm sure you're familiar with the, the counterclockwise study that, that Ellen Langer, Langer, uh, she had written, which was about how there are some kind of like not only psychological, but even physical, there are physical benefits uh, to living in an environment uh, that reminds you of your youth. And that sometimes it, in, in some cases, it actually can kind of, you know, there is a, there, not like there's like a de-aging effect, like in Cocoon, where you step into a pool and arise and you're totally younger, but there is, there are, there are these qualities that actually work. And um, she hadn't kind of applied that thesis to the villages. And I thought, well, this is like the biggest version of what on, on, you know, on scale of, of what she was talking about. So that, that was another kind of framework that I was thinking a lot about when, when we were making this. Um, and you just said the magic word cocoon. Wasn't there a movie cocoon? Remember that? I love that movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but I think what made your movie magical was you did show the fun and the games, but as we know, everyone, including your age and middle age and older age, everybody has psychological situations. But you yeah. brought out, I think you brought out in four of these people. And there was a lot of, you know, empathy. And there was a lot of, oh, really? And look at that character. But we know that even people who live in these big communities here, not, not like that, but you know, where they, they are all similar. There are always situations and you did a masterful job of doing it on top of all the good things. Well, I, 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 I appreciate that. And I hope you get that word out to the folks in the villages. I, I, I honestly think, um, well, you know, I, I, look, I think the, the four subjects of this film, I think you're totally right. They could live anywhere. They, they could have existed anywhere. The stories um, in my mind in this film are, you know, are, are, are relatively universal. They're obviously very specific with, you know, the, the things that kind of happen to each of them and the reasons they get to the places they go to. But the, the, the experiences are universal and the human struggle is universal. The thing that was interesting to me is, you know, how the human struggle manifests itself in a place that's sort of designed to like distract you from all of the bad things in life. Um, so, you know, it's interesting. I feel like we're starting to kind of show the film, obviously the, the documentary subjects, everyone who's in the film has, has seen it. Um, but for the, for the larger audience of the folks in the villages who kind of are very defensive of their, of their lifestyle, um, I think I'm, I'm hoping that they can sort of have the same, uh, the, the same ideas that you have, because I think some people uh, may, may consider this uh, some kind of, hack job of the community, which I don't really, you know, which is not, I don't think it's intended to be that by any stretch. Well, Lance, my, my guest is Lance Oppenheimer. He is the director. And I guess also you're one of the producers of th this wonderful film about the villages. And I must say that if you just showed a film with everybody happy, jumping up and down, I don't think it would go anywhere. I think what makes this important, it shows, okay, everybody, you're gonna go and find lots of wonderful things, but don't forget everybody in every house has a situation and it's your responsibility to be helpful, not to bully, not to laugh 
and and there are many widows and widowers and and it's a great safe place and and it's beautiful weather so let's make it a happy thing right no i i totally agree i mean look it, it's like to me and this is another part that was you know important to to me but making this film this this film isn't about elderly people it's about people in my mind you know this is a, this is a film just a, it's like the, the situations, and I don't understand why this is the case, but I feel like in, in especially in cinema, like you don't really, uh, the, the films that represent, you know, older generations, they, they, they normally feel a little docile or, or kind of watered down. They're showing these like simple inoffensive adventures that, you know, the elderly will go on. And in my mind, I wanted to make a film that, that you know, almost was like a John Hughes movie or something that this was like basically, these folks are all acting as if, you know, for, for, for good and for bad, how, how one acts when you're in high school or middle school. And, you know, when Barbara, the widow in the film is trying to meet a new man and there, right. she's with someone else, it's like, you know, it's, it's, know. it's the same. It's amazing to me. And this was something that I, I think like I was just fascinated by is that a lot of the things we experience in life, you know, don't necessarily, you know, they, they can evolve and change somehow, but they still relatively remain the same. Um, and that that was fascinating to me that even, you know, uh, yeah, that, that a lot of those things were happening, even, you know, just, I think, simply boiled down to just relationships, because I think that's one of the core things that the film really looks at is how to kind of maintain a relationship and how to, uh, you know, create maintain existing ones and create new ones especially at that age um and uh and yeah yeah the, the title is good and it, it very Thank very you. good that this that, you know talk about heaven some kind of heaven yes to an outside person who's living in their own home somewhere and they don't have friends and they don't have activities it does look like heaven but the some kind of heaven was a good added as some added words i was also thinking I'll tell you what really stayed with me. I know the widow stayed with me because I happen to be a widow now three years and, and no one came, no, no one's come knocking at my door and I'm not going and knocking at anyone else's door at this time because I'm very busy as a publisher and a, you know, a Zoomer Times host. But it was poignant for me to see that because that must have hurt her feelings. But let me tell you the person I really enjoyed, the man in, the, in his um, van. <laughs> <laughs> I loved him. I mean, he was so honest. I'm looking for someone with money. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. Now, these were not actors either. That's the other thing we didn't talk about. These are really residents and they let you do this. Uh, unbelievably, yes. I mean, you know, I think that this was part of it, right? I spent a lot of time looking for the cast of, of the film, you know, especially, essentially, I think in documentaries and in fiction films, you know, some directors say that like the, the mark of a good director is how you cast it. And um, the rest should kind of just do itself. I mean, in this case, obviously a documentary, it's much different. You have no idea where a story is going to go, uh, how it's going to evolve. You just kind of have to take the leap of faith. Um, but each person, I mean, I can tell you where I found them. I mean, Dennis, the guy in the van, yeah. he, posed, he posed as a villager. He wasn't actually one of them, as you see in the film. Right. So he, uh, he, he got in trouble. They told him to get out of there. <laughs> they, told, they told him to get out of there. I actually met him, though, while at, he was masquerading as a villager at a village's singles function. And he kind of whispered in my ear that he wasn't one of them. And he gave me a business card that said celebrity handyman and personal companion for hire. So I was like, is this some kind of gigolo or like, what's, what's his, what's this guy's deal? And then it wasn't only until probably a few months later, he had been kicked out of the house he was staying in when I first met him, uh, that I realized he lived in a van. And I was like, that's uh, you know, he's got a, I got to follow this Perfect. guy around. Um, Perfect. And then the other two folks, you know, well, the, the, Reggie and Ann and then Barbara, Re Reggie, I, I met like, that's uh, you know, he's got a, I got to follow this Perfect. guy around. Um, Perfect. And then the other two folks, you know, well, the, the, Reggie and Ann and then Barbara. Re Reggie, I, I met at a, I met first, actually. I, I met him at a dance floor. Uh, uh, on a, I, went, I went to a kind of a singles bar. It's kind of a pickup bar where singles go to dance and drink. And um, I was filming with someone else. And this guy kept doing like uh, these, you know, these crazy dance moves. Right. He was doing Tai Chi. He had strobe right. gloves on, strobe lights for on his glove. Right. Um, <laughs> shots and he kept ruining the shots. So I, I eventually had to tap him on the shoulder and I said, sir, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to 
you know, can you just move out of the way for like five minutes? And he, and he told me, he goes, I think you're filming with the wrong person. You're fil- you should be filming with me. And I was like, Oh, oh my God. And then he told me yeah, he manifested right. us. So I was right. like, okay, well, for a manifestation of you, probably we got to film with you. And then we met with Anne. Once I discovered that she kind of was, uh, you know, pretty much the polar opposite of him, I was just fascinated by their relationship. So I had to, I, you know, she took the, probably the most convincing to be in the film because I think mm-hmm. she didn't really know what we were doing or yeah. Uh, also, I mean, it's a very brave thing that she let us do, which was essentially film a lot of their the, tor- the turmoil of their marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, but eventually we were kind of were able to get in sync. And after a lot of, you know, having dinner together, a lot of a lot of shared meals, um, I think she kind of got comfortable around us. And there was a lot of mutual trust that was happening. And then Barbara, I met at a um, actually my first night at the villages, I went to the acting club because I figured if I was going to find any interesting subjects who weren't really, you know, too shy about being on camera, I'd probably, they probably would be there. Um, So I introduced myself. I said, I don't know what I'm making a film about, but I'm interested in hearing your stories. And then um, Barbara, after I kind of gave my spiel, she came up to me and uh, you know, she told me about her husband and how, you know, she, she didn't really want to be there anymore. And, kind of her whole story so I that was sort of the way it all pieced together but I am it's interesting to see some folks some folks will see the film and I imagine that they'll be confused that they won't know if it's a fiction film or if it's a documentary film and um, I, I, I take very great uh, I, I take pride in that because I think that was one of our intentions was you know the village is, is like uh, is, is a place that negates reality and it seems like it's its own kind of universe and that was sort of we wanted to kind of carry that feeling over to the film make it feel a little bit less than your traditional documentary and something a little bit more did the uh, developers see this they allowed you to come in i'm sure you had you had to convince them about what you were doing and because it couldn't be negative or they wouldn't want you there well, to be completely honest, uh, no, I didn't get actually, I honestly didn't get official access from them. I tried um, and I never heard from them. So I, I just sort of simply took that as a way, uh, you know, more or less to go make the film I wanted to make and deal with everything else afterwards. Thankfully, you know, I, we have a pretty extensive legal team that that's on the film now. And uh, we're, we're I, I'm pretty sure, knock on wood, we're in the clear. If they want to sue me, I'll let them go at it and hopefully it'll bring a lot of attention to the film. But um, I hope, I hope that we don't get sued, but anyway, the, the film was kind of shot with a, with a, with a, with a, um, we had to shoot it very furtively. So we were going to places where we knew we would be kicked out within 30 minutes <laughs> on the property. So we had to do it really fast. Thankfully it's such a big place that they couldn't find me, you know, that we kept going and anytime they would, they would, they would try and stop us. We would go to somewhere else and, you know, ultimately, the thing I kept trying to tell a lot of the, the, the kind of the, the, the team that worked for the villages was that this wasn't a film really about the villages per se. It was about people who lived in the villages and 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 um, not and, and not even a representative, you know, a very specific sliver of people in the villages, people on the margins of it. Um, and I think every time I said that, they were like, you're making a hit piece. And I was like, no, I'm not. Um, <laughs> so I'm hoping when they see the film, they'll, they'll, their their uh, perceptions will change and. Uh, we'll be able to, you know, shake hands or something. Well, there have been films uh, about communities like this with older people, but no one has ever been able to get anything of this this type of a community. It is unusual. Everybody knows about the villages. I don't know how many people have even visited. I visited very early on and I saw it. As a matter of fact, you're going to laugh at this. Um, because I have a magazine here in South Florida, I thought, gee, it's great. I'm going to see if I can get advertisers and produce it and give it out to the people there. Yeah. Well, the developer said, forget it, lady. He said, I'm going to do my own. <laughs> so I knew early on, this is going to be big stuff because very promotional, but they did a great job. And I, I have to hand it to them. They, they did bring on what they said it was going to be. So sure, you're going to have people like you featured. But I would say all in all, it does show that growing older can be growing fun. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, sit in your home and, and lose out on things because we know now that the um, the people who are living 80 and 90 are still going, just like you said, a man's on a cruise ship. People are getting married there. I have a couple of uh, one book, um, I feature books and 
The one man is uh, 93, he's brilliant. And his wife died after 65 years. And he brought his new wife. They've been married for three years. She's in her 80s. And he's fantastic. And they're so happy. So you, you really hit on something. I think you're going to have to have a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm open to it. Yeah. Well, you're really on the cusp of something great. At your age, you have a, a deep, you know, you understand the human psyche. I just believe that. And, and the fact that you can now, you know, direct the photographers or the cameramen to pick up on all those nuances. I want to go back, though, to one thing, the, the couple, the woman who was having a terrible time with him. I felt very sad for her. But then and at the end, it did wind up well because they got help. And I thought that was a beautiful thing. Yeah, I mean, look, it's, I, 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 I think it was interesting to be there for a lot of this. And I think, again, I'm just very grateful to Anne and Reggie. I'm grateful to everyone who in the film that they were able to allow us random, you know, outside young filmmakers to kind of come in and, and, and bear witness to a lot of the stuff that was going on in their lives. But I was very, you know, I, I think in their case, it was interesting. They hadn't really, when we first started filming with them, it really seemed like, you know, what Reggie was saying was kind of true in a way. They both were sort of living, you know, these kind of uh, very different lives that they hadn't, they don't, they didn't really talk all so much. They didn't really take their meals together, you know. And then uh, when, when we interviewed them, it was sort of forcing them uh, to talk to each other for the first time. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it, it was interesting. Now, I mean, now they're, they're, they seem like they've never been better. Reggie has gone to see a psychiatrist. Um, you know, Anne is, is, I think like, you know, b b both of them are kind of working, you know, on, on, on trying to remain together. And I think that to me, that was something that I found very, um, you know, no matter how dark the film gets, I thought it was very inspiring in a way that, that this is, this is what marriage is. It's not, you know, it's not, as, as Anne says, it's, it's not rosy all the time. Um, but and there are several compromises one must make, I have to imagine. But, but um, I was very just, I, I, I felt like for if when I get married, hopefully in the future, I want <laughs> to aspire to be like them, honestly, because they, they really, yeah. if they could get through that, that the, the rough patches, then in my mind, anyone can. Yeah, that was beautiful. And I'm hoping when other people in the, in the village, and hopefully they, they do this as a major film, show it to everybody, that there'll be people you have no idea in all those beautiful homes with all those beautiful activities suffering from the same thing. And maybe someone will say, hey, Jack, why don't we go and do the same thing? See, look what happened to them. I think that probably of all of them, that was the one that's going to live very strongly. Mm. Well, I, I, I appreciate that. No, and I, I mean, I, I, I totally look, I mean, therapy, talking to someone, getting help when you need it. I, I still think it's unfortunate that it's stigmatized so much, especially I feel like in a place like the villages, you know? Um, so I, 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 I totally agree with you. I mean, if you need, if you need someone to talk to, if you need out, outside external help, go get it. It's if you have the resources, you know, then, then, then you cer certainly should try and seek it out. My guest is, is um, Lance Oppenheim, and he's the director and Park Cruz, who's producer of this great film called Some Kind of Heaven. It's all about what happens in the villages. We know that there are many gated communities, not as large as the villages, because that's really the, the largest, as you said, in the country. I wasn't aware it was the largest in the country, but it's very successful. It's great. You can go for a visit. You can go for a tour. And, and Lance, you, uh, you're really going to be the star, and I'm so happy that you produced this we are putting the cheerleaders on our cover of Boomer Times. We do have a wonderful, Jan Mitchell's great, and she wrote a super article that we're going to put in Boomer Times. But let's not be uh, strangers. I, I want to follow you, especially Miami Beach. I have so many stories to tell you about Miami Yeah, Beach. we need to keep talking about it. My, my, uh, my girlfriend went to Miami Beach High, actually, as well. So you, you, you both need to meet as, as okay. an alum. Okay, I'm, much, I'm her, much older, but it'll be fun. You know, there, listen. you know, she's, it's, it's, a whole, uh, it's a whole thing. I, I, love, I love that place, though, and I love, I right. love Miami Beach. Right. Uh, I, grew up in, I grew up in Fort Lauderdale, but I've always been, I've always been jealous and, and, and about Aww. growing up in Miami. I think it's- Well, stay in touch, okay? And good luck. Yeah. Anything else I can do to help you, let me know, Lance. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure okay. talking to you. Okay, okay. bye everybody. Take we'll care. be back with another one. Bye.